Welcome to this online service to mark the closure of our beloved McMurray College. While there is still hope that we might be able to hold such a service in person in the future, the staff of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church wanted to find an appropriate way to mark this momentous transition along with all who are grieving this loss. Alumni, students, faculty, staff, administration, trustees, the Jacksonville community, and the many Methodists who have long supported the college with both prayers and contributions. We hope that you find this service meaningful and we are grateful to all those who have contributed in any way to this service and whose names you will find in the downloadable program as well as on the screen. The Illinois Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church, a predecessor body to today's Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church, established the Illinois Conference Female Academy in Jacksonville in 1846. The institution provided for the intellectual and moral education of women seeking to become teachers, benevolent workers, and missionary workers. The early founders included clergymen Peter Cartwright and Peter Akers, as well as the conference's committee on education. In fact, many of the college's 17 presidents have been Methodist clergy. The stories of two of these presidents, James Fraser Jaquis and Joseph R. Harker, highlight the long-standing relationship between the college and Illinois Methodists. James Fraser Jaquis, a Methodist minister who had served as a circuit rider in Southern Illinois and later became an unofficial emissary for President Lincoln, was the college's first president. Under his watch, the first classes opened in 1847 in the basement of the East Charge Methodist Episcopal Church, known today as Centenary United Methodist Church, with a modest enrollment of 117 students. In addition to raising funds and recruiting students, President Jaquist taught chemistry. Before the first college building, Main Hall, was completed in 1850, out-of-town students lived with local Methodist families. In 1893, the trustees chose Dr. Joseph Harker as the seventh president in his autobiography entitled Eventide Memories, 
President Car Harker notes that during his first summer at the college, he quickly learned that the college had been sustained through the years only by the interest and gifts of the Methodists. Harker, who was ordained as a Methodist elder in 1910, served as a delegate to General Conference in 1904, 1908, and 1916, all while serving as McMurray's president. Thanks to President Harker's work on restoring the college's relationship with the Illinois Conference, successful capital campaigns were conducted by the Methodist Episcopal Church and Dr. Harker to establish an endowment resulting in an expansion of curriculum and the granting of baccalaureate degrees beginning in 1909. While the relationship between the college and the church has taken on many forms over the years, the Illinois Great Rivers Conference and its predecessors have continued to provide financial support to the college, as well as appointing members to fill three seats on McMurray's Board of Trustees. The Fellheimer Trust of Wesley United Methodist Church in Macomb provided scholarship support for students interested in church careers for many years United Methodists have served as chaplains, faculty, and administrators in recent years, while the McMurray Choir and Holy Fools have contributed to the worship life of many United Methodist congregations in Illinois and beyond. From its very beginnings, McMurray's core values of knowledge, faith, and service have been informed by the Methodist commitment to knowledge and vital piety. I'll be reading Isaiah 43 from the Old Testament at the steps of Andy Murner Chapel. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Hello. My name is Chris Douglas. I'm the head football coach at McMurray College. I've been serving here as the head coach for nine seasons. I want to share with you a scripture that uh, has held close to my heart for a long time. And I'll describe why it's been a very important scripture to me. I was the head football coach originally at my alma mater back from 2002 to 2006. At the end of the 2006 season, they asked me to resign. Things weren't going great and they wanted a different direction. It was a devastating event for me. And for about the next 12 months, I suffered with depression and anger and guilt that I took out on a lot of people around me. But during that time, my wife shared with me a verse that at the time made complete sense, but I really didn't sink it down deep into my heart until afterwards. But it's from Jeremiah 11, 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Right now, a lot of us at McMurray are struggling with what's next, uh, with COVID, with the closure, closure of our institution, our students, our faculty, our staff are all probably wondering what's next. And that causes a lot of, of stress and an anxiety. And in that time, life is gonna be difficult, but we can hang on to the promise that God has given that he is looking out for our welfare and that he has our future and there is hope. But I think it's important to dive into the next three verses that proceed after that. From verses 12 through 14 of Jeremiah 29, it says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. I think the first part of that's really, really important. Then you will call upon me 
and pray to me. I will hear you. He, God says, Jesus says, I will hear your prayers, but you have to come to me. You will seek me and you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. I think that's really important. He has our welfare in, his, in the front of his mind. He's going to take care of us, but we have to seek after him. That's one thing I would encourage all of our McMurray students, faculty, staff, to continue to remember that God has us in his sights and he has us in our welfare. We just have to seek him. Thank you. A reading from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. It is my pleasure to be with you virtually today. I extend greetings from Nashville and the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry. I extend greetings from our General Secretary, Greg Berquist, and I am Mark Hanshaw, the Associate General Secretary for the Division of Higher Education. And it's my great pleasure to be with you on this very important day, at least in virtual form. Today is a special day. It's a day that we remember the lasting legacy that is McMurray College. We celebrate today the many individuals who have served their communities through McMurray College. We celebrate faculty, staff, administrators, and of course, most of all, students. These are individuals who have had their lives and careers shaped by McMurray and individuals who have gone on to have an incredible impact on communities all around the country and even beyond. McMurray stands as part of a unique legacy, a legacy established by the people called Methodists. And that legacy centers around the idea that education should be accessible. This legacy goes all the way back to 1765 in North America, because that was the date that John Wesley sent his first pastor uh, to this part of the world. Uh, Lawrence Coughlin arrived in 1765 in Newfoundland, then a raucous seaport. And there he went on to establish a chapel, the first Methodist chapel in North America. But he had difficulties. He was not attracting many people to that chapel until he did something unique. He decided, what if this chapel could also serve as a school? And that provided a lasting legacy. And so throughout its history, Methodism in North America has worked hard to inspire educational institutions and to press for educational accessibility at every level. And McMurray College is a part of that legacy. Even today, there are more Methodist educational institutions that are denominationally affiliated than there are um, in educational institutions of any other denomination except the Catholic Church. So that's quite a legacy. 
and indeed, McMurray is quite a part of it. Today, I recognize all that has been accomplished by the McMurray community, and I celebrate it with you. And I say that today, we must remember that that legacy does not end, but it lives on. Even as the campus closes, all of those who have been touched, formed, and shaped by McMurray College continue to be engaged in their communities and will continue to be representatives of education and the Methodist footprint in education. So it's my great pleasure again to be with you this day. I wish you well and look forward to being back in Illinois and seeing the campus as it transforms into a new phase or a new future. So I enjoy this opportunity and I celebrate with you and uh, Godspeed to each of you. Thanks. reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Annie Murner Chapel was constructed during the presidency of Clarence McClelland. In 1944, the Board of Trustees agreed that the building of a chapel should be part of the college's centennial anniversary celebration, which would take place in October of 1946. Mrs. Annie Murner Pfeiffer, who had previously donated $100,000 to build the library, named after her husband, Henry Pfeiffer, agreed to give $125,000 toward the building of a new chapel. 
the Methodists of the Illinois Conference contributed more than $100,000 to the chapel fund, and the Methodist Board of Education also contributed $25,000. Additional funds were raised by alumni and friends of the college. However, due to World War II and its aftermath, the building of the chapel did not commence until 1948. The laying of the cornerstone took place on October 8, 1948, and the chapel, named after its generous donor, was dedicated on December 11, 1948. As most alumni know, Annie Murner Chapel and Henry Pfeiffer Library were built across from each other with their doors perfectly aligned. Tradition says that because of their endless love, nothing shall be built on Rutledge Lawn, the green space between the buildings, so the two may gaze on each other forever. I'm Camilla Pierce Hempstead, McMurray College class of 1984. From the first time that I set foot on the McMurray College campus and walked through Annie Murner Chapel until the last day of commencement when I walked out of the chapel, my life at McMurray was centered around Annie Murner Chapel. I felt a great connection to God when I was in that place. I was in the chapel for convocation, for choir rehearsal, for band concerts, for holy fools, and for hours and hours of organ practice. I also participated in the Religious Life Committee under Chap Goulding and Mark Schleter. I was so blessed to have so many people in my life at McMurray during a time when I was searching for some guidance, when I needed a place to ask questions about God, when I needed a place that wouldn't give me the answers, but would give me guidance. I will be forever grateful to the friends that I made at McMurray, those who mentored and guided me, and the beautiful space of Annie Murner Chapel. They got me closer to God. Blessed be the name of God, whose word has long been proclaimed within this hallowed place. We give you thanks, O oh God. As generations have prayed their prayers and sung your praises here, your spirit has blessed countless worshipers. We give you thanks, O oh God. We have welcomed new classes here and celebrated their academic accomplishments. We give you thanks, O oh God. We have practiced our God given gifts of preaching, of teaching, speaking, singing, and playing. We give you thanks, O oh God. We've lamented over studies, lost friends, injustice, and world events. We give you thanks, O oh God. We have rejoiced over grades, job offers, marriage, and reunions. We give you thanks, O oh God. We've celebrated the Lord's Supper here and been nurtured by it through our journey in faith. We give you thanks, O oh God. And from within these walls, many have gone out to serve you in the world. We give you thanks, O oh God. And as we go now from this house into a further journey of faith, we give you thanks, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I often find myself thinking back to the first tour of McMurray, walking through campus, residence halls, and classrooms, meeting faculty, staff, and students like I had on every other college visit, except something was different. I wouldn't find out what that was until after my first week. What it was was a love and passion felt by students, faculty, and staff. A passion for success, love for each other, and love for our campus. This passion and love is what pushed and motivated many of us to be the best versions of ourselves, often finding love, faith, and lifelong friends along the way. I don't have enough time nor words to give back to Mac for what it did for me. It took in a scared young man, unsure of himself and of his future, and molded me into who I am today one with the confidence and ability to tackle the world. 
to the class of 2020, we've been through a lot. Being dubbed the perfect class at our Highlander orientation days might have jinxed us, but we persevered. We persevered through loss and through triumphs, through heartbreaks and setbacks, through faculty and staff losses, through barb leaving, through shrinkage and growth. We persevered through possible closure, through a global pandemic, and through the eventual closure of our home. A home many of us didn't get to say goodbye to. So, to McMurray College, from our first days in the pews of Amy Murder Chapel to the last day we should have had, on behalf of myself, the class of 2020, and to all students who've been able to call you home, thank you. Welcome, I'm Beverly Rogers, the president of McMurray College. Welcome to this service of remembrance. As I was thinking about what I might say to you as an introduction to this service, I often think of myself as a giant jigsaw puzzle. I'm composed both physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically of many, many different pieces that come together to form who I am. Perhaps you could say my family is this jigsaw piece above my heart because I love them so much. Maybe my education is part of my brain. I think of things that way often, but it isn't just the people in our lives that compose and influence who we are. My time in Minnesota, where every day I saw the American bald eagle flying, feeding their baby chicks, osprey diving and getting fish, my grandparents' house that was the only common and consistent place in my younger life. All of the places that we've been also imprint themselves on our hearts, minds, and our souls. Certainly during my time in Jacksonville, Illinois, and at McMurray College, this campus, as well as its people, have left a giant imprint that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. To me, that's what remembrance means. It's permanently imprinted. I've seen people outside lining up for weddings. I've seen brides and grooms coming out of this chapel. I've also attended memorial services for those who have passed on, including one of our own young students. So the sad occasions the blissful occasions, the graduations, the convocations, the speakers that we've had, they've all left an indelible impression. Standing here today in this chapel will leave a lasting impression on my heart, mind, and soul, as I know it has many of you who are watching today. This is a very special place. And as long as we remember this very special place, it will not cease to be remembered. So I encourage you, write down your memories. Perhaps someday we'll collect them. The hundreds of people that have been married here have to remember those wonderful days. So I thank you for watching, and I also want to thank the Reverend Beth Fender for organizing this very special event for a very special geographic location, a very special building, not because of the bricks and mortar, but because we remember the things that have transpired here that have left such a wonderful and lasting impression in our lives.
As alumni of Holy Fools can tell you, the white pom-poms on the altar candles are known as warm fuzzies. The McMurray College Holy Fools Clown Ministry began on the McMurray campus in 1975 and continued for 35 years as a way for students to grow in their faith and to share that faith with others. Warm Fuzzies became part of Holy Fools tradition as a result of the Warm Fuzzy story, which generally took the place of a children's sermon during the service. Warm Fuzzies represented God's love, and they were lovingly made, often in late night fuzzy parties in a dorm basement or lounge, and distributed by members of the Holy Fools to many who attended services. During my time in the Holy Fools, it was customary for us to tie white warm fuzzies on the candles whenever we led a worship service, whether it was here in the chapel or in a church somewhere in Illinois or beyond. When my husband and I were married here in the chapel, we carried on that tradition by tying white warm fuzzies to the altar candles before our wedding service. And it is those warm fuzzies that grace the candles today, some 29 years later. Hi, I'm Kurt Lindquist. From 1985 to 1987, I was the chaplain and instructor at Murray College. I'm sorry to hear that it's closing, but it's given me the opportunity to think of several wonderful memories of those years. As a chaplain, my primary responsibility was to help with the Holy Fools. And so I remember working with Kathy King, Lynn Marshall, and numerous other students who, to be honest, I've forgotten names. Um, but they organized, they put together, they showed creativity in their dedication of trying to construct a non-traditional way of helping congregations around Central Illinois worship. And I remember those van rides and those late night sessions working with them to, to put together worship services. I also remember as an instructor working with the Great Ideas uh, course sequence, working with Jim Goulding and others um, to create ways in which all the students would learn about uh, the long traditions, Christian, Judeo, and others, as well as trying to be responsible in the world today. Um, I also def definitely remember with less fondness some of the course assignments, but it was a great time there. Thank you. It was heartbreaking to hear that McMurray was closing for good. I had a great education from McMurray and truly enjoyed my time there. Unfortunately, I also understand how expensive it is to give such a good education and to do it in such a remote place. But I'm very thankful for the education we had there, for the opportunity to explore the thinkers of the world, the imagination of, of people from all history and to truly engage with one another and with the community on various ways of helping people, of serving people and doing ministry together. From the Church and Religious Vocations Colloquium to the Holy Fools, to yes, even core, my understanding of life and experience expanded exponentially. And I truly enjoyed the professors who were so dedicated that they would spend time with us in class, out of class, and just sitting in the dining hall. In ministry, I learned that sometimes you have to have a lot of fun to share a good gospel. And sometimes you have to really challenge the norms that people accept so that they can see living together in new ways loving each other in new ways. And through the time at McMurray, I was able to understand the blessings that we all have been received so much. And I'm very sad to know that another generation won't have that opportunity. But I thank God for the ability to share what I learned and what I experienced for as long as I have.
was the Illinois Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church, which first established the Illinois Conference Female Academy here in Jacksonville in 1846. The power behind the idea came from a small group of Methodist Episcopal clergy, including the famous circuit rider, Peter Cartwright. The idea was to establish a place of learning for females specifically, aimed at intellectual and moral growth. The focus of the education was aimed primarily at teachers, at missionary volunteers, and at benevolent workers. From that time in 1846 until now, what we now know as McMurray College and the United Methodist Church have enjoyed a continuous and fruitful relationship together. And now this college having been consecrated and founded in part with the Methodist Church, together with the land on which it stands and all objects remaining in it, we now deconsecrate and release for any honorable use we declare that it is no longer the place of learning of a United Methodist College. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, as in your great goodness, you have blessed the many ministries carried on by this college, in this building, and on this campus. So now, and in the days and years to come, we pray that you may greatly bless your many ministries in your ongoing church. Bless those persons who have worshiped in this building, those who have gained experience and learning on this campus as disciples of the risen Christ. May we be channels at all times of your steadfast love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Once again, thank you for joining us for this online service. We hope it has provided an opportunity for you to reflect on your connection with McMurray College as we join with the broader community of those who have been formed in this place, sharing both our memories and our sense of loss. Of course, as long as there are those of us who can tell the story, McMurray will never really be gone because she lives in our hearts. Once again, we invite you to join us when it is safe to gather for both homecoming and an in-person service of remembrance.